Well, I came to the realization that those are the kind of kids I wanted to work with. I wanted to work with world class students and world class athletes, and there's very few places. So when I say that I, I earmarked rights, I, I literally did. There's five schools in America, and I said, I would really be happy to work with that. And there's some other jobs that we've looked at, where they haven't been right for us. He was. He was there uh, my first two years in 2012. So obviously, some familiarity always helps. Uh, but I'm not sure how far it went down the road for, for him. For me, having somebody you know and somebody you trust in that position above you is critical. And like I talked about, the alignment the president is Stanford is where they would want to visit, where I would like to be. That kind of, that kind of consistent success. How do you get past them? I think it starts with the process. I think you have to say that it has to be in what you're doing in the offices. It has to be in the week in terms of what you're doing. And I think schematically we've got some great ideas ahead of us there as well. Um, I think you got to look back at Stanford and realize that this is the first stretch like that for Stanford as well. We talked about consistency. So we're on a nine-year bowl run at Stanford. That's really cool. But I think the longest previous was three years. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to take some work. The world wasn't built in a day, but you're going to work right now. Mike, when Joe said, we're kidding, you're not hiring. I didn't want to hire him. It takes back to what your emotions were at that moment. It was one of those things where you realize a dream came true. It goes back. You feel so many different emotions because you start getting those texts come in as soon as somebody breaks the story, which was pretty early, pretty prematurely yesterday. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, you get 450 text messages from your former players and coaches across America, and it's so humbling. And you realize that yes, this is what we've worked for. This is so exciting. Let's go. What do you mean, that yeah. This is consistent. A guy that has changed my career, who has always been there every turn. <laughs> all he's done is told me, hey, you need me to drive down, you need to get in touch with this high school coach, and that high school coach, put me to work. And uh, that's that's a pretty good resource in the state, I'd say. Like, you start thinking about what you do, what your staff's going to look like, who you're going to talk to, you know, guy, guy <laughs> maybe here, other guys outside the, outside the program, what you, who you're talk to. Them. We'll definitely talk to everybody on the staff. Uh, I want to do that because I've been on, on the other side of that coin as well. So I will talk to everybody on the staff. I've got some guys in mind. And, and the problem with it is, even if they're great coaches, they're not guys that I've worked with, the guys that I've been in, in the trenches with, the guys that I trust. And for the first job, as important as it is, to get this thing rolling the right way, I'm going to go with guys that I know and trust. Houston is so cool to me because it's where, again, from 5 to 10, where I first started playing sports, where I went to my first baseball game, which was an Astros game, where I went to Astro World, which I don't even think exists anymore. Uh, and then the Houston Last Night Show Rodeo, I've been telling my wife about forever. She is so happy that we're finally going to go to this rodeo. What are you talking about? But just the people in this town, all the things it has to offer now, and then really seeing this area right around Grace University is uh, just really exciting. I, I can't wait for my kids to grow up. Can you get from age five to ten? Yes, sir. How crazy is that? Back to it's pretty cool. Can you talk about that? So actually we have made an agreement that I will be with Stanford for the Alamo Bowl, but the uh, next couple of days are, are really crazy. I will be, uh, be here tonight and tomorrow morning, then I fly to Atlanta with Bryce Love, hopefully they accept the Doug Walker report. I'll be back here Friday for a recruiting function, and then Saturday I'll be in New York for the Heisman. Sunday I'll be after practicing on the field, and then Monday to Thursday we're going to be recruiting like crazy for Bryce. And got a few guys with boots on the ground right now. They're uh, already working at recruiting, so we're certainly not losing any time right now. We're going to make a full rush next week. Was that, was that a difficult decision to, to continue coaching one more day? It, it was not difficult at all for me. When when Joe Carlgaard signed off on it and David Shaw said he wanted me to do it, that was the easiest decision out there because I believe in finishing. I believe in finishing with these guys. There's a lot of guys on that team that I've literally known for seven years and I was in their home recruiting and now they're fifth year seniors. And it would have hurt me not to be able to do that. Uh, so I'm very happy to both my former boss and my current boss wanted me to do that. I know you're happy about being here at Rice, but it's the transition from Stanford to Rice. What's that like for you? How are you feeling? Oh, ask me in a month. Right now, I mean, it's I've found unbelievable people, people that want to help. Everybody in this Rice community that's come out, everybody that I've come in contact with, is li literally the nicest people that you can meet. 
and it's how can I help? And so right now, I'd say that uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the old rice community, and I'm pretty happy with the transition. It's been really easy, but everybody loves a winner and a beginner. So again, ask me in a couple months, maybe even a year from now, but I think the transition's going as smooth as it possibly can right now. Okay, you talked about the right fit. Joe talked about the right fit. What is, what is it about you that you see in these other kids that you see in the other members of the right So I think the, the fit comes from the student athletes and the caliber of the fact that you do have to be elite in both areas. And so I think that, as we talked about, there's five of those. There's five of those institutions in America where you can play Division One football and still get world-class academics. What are those? Yeah. In my opinion, that Rice University, Stanford University, Duke University, Northwestern, and Vanderbilt. And other than that, you can talk about getting a great education up in the Ivies. Or you can talk about uh, playing great football and majoring in underwater basketball.